What's up, my Wizards Dev? SBMTG down there. We got decks. Um, we haven't done a $20 deck in a long time, and I know how much people love $20 decks. Today, we're going to do $20 mono blue mid range, and it's actually a real deck. There's a lot of good options for the deck. I like the way it's performed in testing so far, so let's check it out. I actually think the deck is real. Start with the creatures. That's important. Mid range deck. We're playing 20 creatures, which is a lot for a blue deck. You wouldn't know it, but blue has a lot of really, really good creatures in this format right now. Um, starting with three copies of Stratus Dancer. This has always been a good card in the format and is seeing more play now due to it you know, being included in Bant Company just recently. Um, and I see why, even though it doesn't have a great end of the battlefield trigger like company decks want, it does protect your whole squad from mass removal of all strikes. <laughs> That's pretty important. Not getting hit by Languish or Planar Outburst or Radiant Flames or Kozilek's Return, whatever, is exactly what we want. So, And it's not a bad two drop either. And you know, Relevant Threat flies over for two a lot. So Stratus Dancer, premier blue creature in the format right now and probably the best two drop we can play. Three copies of Harbinger of the Tides in the deck. Another amazing blue two-drop in the format right now. This does struggle when played against Abbot of Carol Keep or Siege Rhino, you know, things with those kind of awesome Enter the Battlefield triggers. But for the most part, card is really good at uh, wrecking aggro and other mid-range decks. Tempo, which is something we need to do. Not only on turn four when we play with Flash, but if we're on the draw, we can play this turn two or three, often pop a guy back to their hand, force them to play him again. Later on in the game, we can bounce an attacker back to their hand and then counter it when they try to play it. A lot of good reasons to play uh, Harbinger of the Tides. Relevant body on turn two, so yeah, as far as a mid-range deck goes, perfect card to play. And I would play four copies, but it does have the aforementioned problems against a couple of key creatures in the format. And I think we can play a creature that is also important and more overlooked than this, also in the two drop slots. Let me get to that guy. Three copies of Frostwalker in the deck. This is seeing play in Bank Company's sideboard. That'll be the last time I bring up Bank Company, but this comes in a lot against aggro and some other mid-range decks so it can trade up. That's not bad against control. It's a really relevant body very, very early in the game, and that's really good, too. Just a four-power guy on turn two is unheard of for a lot of mid-range decks, but blue has the ability to do it. Not for too much longer, because the card's going to rotate, but while you can, play the card. It's actually been really good in the main deck here because, again, against some decks it can just blow through for four damage. Against other decks it can trade up. And sure, it'll soak up removal sometimes, but all of our creatures soak up removal. We're not that worried about it. They will try to kill this, and we can just play something more relevant than it. Not only that, it's not a bad top deck later on in the game. A four-power guy is always fine on turn five or even six, you know? So having Frostwalker around has actually been really good. Started off as a two of, and Harbinger was a four of. Cut it down to make it just both three of, because Frostwalker has performed very very well. It's a very, really relevant power just on turn two. Frostwalker's a really good mid-range creature, so try him out. I know a lot of people will be like, Frostwalker? No, Frostwalker. I'm totally serious. Try it out. Card is good. Three copies of Shore Crasher Elemental in the deck are only three drop creature. I don't know that I want to play four copies. I don't feel like we should overplay this or anything. Um, but it has been a very good card. It's very resilient. Probably the most resilient card in the deck. Pretty versatile, either being a good blocker or a good attacker, you know. Um, so lots of good things to like about the card. Although there are better three drops in the format. You know, Anafenza, uh, Manus Rider, these are both better three drops. But Shore Crasher holds, it, holds its own. It's not a terrible card at all. It's been really good for me in that it can dodge removal, which is a very important thing to be able to do in this format right now, and well, sometimes we played as a 4-drop, specifically so you can make it dodge removal. So, Shore Crasher's been more than welcome, as far as I'm concerned. The card has been, has been good, but not great or anything. Just a really good way to sort of fill out our curve on the way to 5-mana. Four copies of Whirler Rogue in the deck. The only natural 4-drop we're playing, although we are playing 4-drops in Spirit, and Harbinger of the Tides, and Shore Crasher, if you want to protect him. Um, but this is just a, the best natural blue four drop we can play. It's sort of P and Kuran light. You know, it's you know, if you're not playing, you know, if you don't have access to red, this is a great way to play P and Kuran basically. And it can make things unblockable, which is good in this deck because we've got a big creature coming up that I'm going to talk about. Um, so that's always welcome too, you know. Being able to put three creatures onto the battlefield, two of which fly, and that extra gravy is amazing. Being able to make creatures unblockable. So everything about the card is really, really good, helping us go wide or chump block. You know, we can either it's either aggressive or defensive, depending on what situation we're in. And to finish off the creatures, four copies of Icefall Regent in the deck. Don't know why this card's never really caught on. It's one of my favorite cards in Dragons of Tarkir. It is removal on a huge stick. That's awesome. Lightning Strike isn't in the format anymore. That's really important when talking about this card. There are definitely ways. Fiery Impulse, but it has to be turned on. But just since Lightning Strike left the format, the card has gotten notably better. Just mono blue removal is good. On a huge flying stick is really good, too. So I just... 
I don't know why the card isn't more popular. It always overperforms for me, and I just really like it. Top end removal that takes out their best guy on the field and swings for, you know, 20% of their life total. So, play on Small Region. If you haven't gotten a chance to play the card yet, I swear to you, it's fantastic. Into the spells, we're playing 15 of them in the deck, starting with some removal. And I'm going to throw you a curveball. We're playing four copies of Spatial Contortion to start this off. Spatial Contortion is probably the best removal that we have uh, available to us, you know, and there's definitely ways in the mana base we can finagle this to easily be able to play this on turn two or three. It's all the way, it's good all the way up until turn four or even five, clearing out smaller guys later on in the game, you know. Um, so, Special Contortion, we just don't have great options in blue for straight up removal, and this is probably the best thing we could possibly play on turn two or three to, you know, make sure aggro doesn't go too crazy on us, uh, and we can outclass them a little bit later. Um, Spatial Contortion, really, really good. I can't, you know, there's not much I can say about this. Some people will balk at the inclusion of the card, but a lot of people know how good this is already. And, again, in a color that's sort of thin on removal, if I was making mono green, I might put in Spatial Contortion, too. Just a color that's thin on premium removal, the card is very, very good in supporting um, a deck like that. And it just does the same thing here. A little bit more removal here. Three copies of Reality Shift. Another card that I'm not really sure why it never caught on. Um, the card has always performed very well for me when I play it. I played in a lot of budget decks. My idea is that blue is usually coupled with colors that have very good removal, so there's no reason to play Reality Shift, which is you know substandard to a lot of white or black removal. That argument makes sense, but in a mono blue deck, Reality Shift performs very, very well. Um, exiling a creature in this format is better than it's ever, ever been. You know, we've got a lot of stuff that manipulates the graveyard. So something that Reality Shift is amazing against a lot of stuff, especially things like Hangerback Walker, you know. Exiling that can be very good. It doesn't bust into, you know, fine tokens if you do that. So the card is great as just two mana instant speed exile. Why don't more people play Reality Shift? We're playing some counter spells here, starting with one copy of Dispel. Dispel is just amazing in the format right now. Not only does it counter all the charms and commands people are playing, but it counters Rally the Ancestors, and Rally right now is probably the best deck in the format until Rally the Ancestors rotates in a, you know, a month or so here. Um, but just the ability to counter Rally makes it main deckable, because all the Rally that we see right now. Um, but if not that, it counters a lot of, you know, removal. Fiery Impulse is one thing that comes to mind. Utter End is another. Grasp of Darkness, Murderous Cut, you know, counters every charm every command, so yeah, yeah, there's Dispel, crazy card right now, play at least the one copy in the main. Three Clash of Wills in the deck, and you could substitute Silumgar Scorn for this, but we're only playing the four dragons, you know, and Silumgar Scorn is very, very good, even if you don't have a dragon, but I just am a little bit more comfortable with Clash of Wills, especially with the slight colorless theme that's going on in the mana base, you know, so a little bit more comfortable with Clash, and I like it all the way up until turn like four, five, six in this format, because it's going to counter for you a lot, you know? <laughs> if you can just pump three, four mana into this on turn five or six, you're going to counter whatever spell. And this is very good at countering, you know, Ulamogs and Kozilex. They still get, you know, with Ulamog, they still get to exile two permanents, whatever. You get to counter the huge 10-10 guy that mills a third of your library every time he swings, so. Clash of Wills is good against some decks all the way up until turn seven, eight, nine, so. Clash of Wills covers our turn two very well, and it does make the deck, the inclusion of this one card, can make the deck a little skill intensive because it's either, you know, play a two drop creature or hold off, counter their two drop, and then, you know, go from there with a Clash of Wills. So, that can be, or you can play a two drop creature turn two and then hold your Clash of Wills for turn three or four to counter their bigger stuff. So, just the inclusion of, you know, two drop creatures and Clash of Wills can make the deck very skill intensive and you have to know what they're going to be playing. You have to, you know, play around certain cards, but just an important card to play. We need to play counter spells because we don't get to play much removal, so let's play up what blue is good at. So let's play some counter spells. Clash of Wills may be my pick for one of the best counter spells in the format, so let's play it. Here's my other pick for possible best counter spell in the format. Two copies of Void Shatter in the deck. Void Shatter is amazing. I was just talking about how you want to exile things in this format. I mean, Den Protector, Tassiger, Kulagon's Command, Ojutai's Command, Jace, you know, there's so many things that brings stuff back, Goblin Dark Dwellers, brings stuff back from the graveyard, you know, and this can be awesome in exiling things so they can never ever have the stinking card again, you know, I really wasn't sure about this over Scattered to the Winds when it first came out, but after I started playing it, it has replaced Scattered to the Winds in every control deck that I've been fiddling around with, because it is that important in this particular format right now. And just having a three mana, no, you can't have that is always good too, so let's play at least a couple copies. 
To finish off the main deck, we need to play some card draw. I was just talking about how we need to play a blue strength. And this is sort of a curveball, but hear me out here. We're playing two copies of Ugin's Insight in the deck. Now, we could play Dig Through Time. We could play Treasure Cruise. We are playing cards that rotate in just a couple of months in the deck. So we could play those things. But, you know, we don't have reliable fetches in our mana base. We are playing Evolving Wilds. We don't have reliable, you know, bunch of fetch lands in our mana base to really fuel Digger Treasure Cruise. Um, and although we could cast them reliably, I have, you know, there's an interesting case for this card, it is inside in this deck. Um, best thing about it is that we're playing Whirler Rogue and Icefall Regent, so Scry 4 or 5 and draw 3 is unbelievable. You know, Scry 5, draw 3 is sort of better than Scry 7, draw, uh, Scry 7, draw 2 in some ways. You know, drawing 3 is always amazing. <laughs> so, and I know this card is sorcery speed, but good, good refill on the 5th or 6th turn for the deck. Sometimes you'll play Icefall. Fifth turn, play this on the sixth turn. And that can be an amazing refill. And, you know, scrying five and then drawing three, I just really want to get through how amazing that actually is. Sure, you know, dig through time, scry seven, you know, draw two is always very, very good. But scry five, draw three is a is almost, uh, in some situations, much better. Drawing three cards is unbelievable. And scrying five before you do so is just... Again, there's not enough superlatives to describe that situation. 25 lands in the deck, and Shivan Reef might be jumping out at you right this very second. The only reason it's in there is because after some testing, I wanted to have a solid, just rounded off, 20 blue sources and 10 um, colorless mana sources, which with the Evolving Wilds, we can get. You know, we got at least the one way so that we can fetch it up with Evolving Wilds if we have to cast Spatial Contortion. On turn two, we can do that on turn one. Um, and it's just good to be able to, you know, thin your deck out a little bit and get what you need when you want it, you know. Just a good, a good way to get, you know, um, wastes mana out is Evolving Wilds. So, wanted to play at least it. Not much else to talk about other than Found You the Consoles. Card can be really good just as, you know, late game option creating two flyers is always good. And with all the Anthem effects in the format, that's always good. And the fact that, you know, this is the produces colorless mana. A lot of reasons to play Foundry right now. And here's the sideboard right here. Disdainful Stroke could go in the main deck. I've been thinking about doing two Clash of Wills, one Disdainful Stroke. Disdainful Stroke is just so fantastic right now. Um, but also really good out of the sideboard, obviously. And Case and Ice, also an all-star out, all out of the sideboard. And so is Warping Whale, which could earn a one-of uh, slot in the main deck. I can see that happening. And two Crush of Tentacles have proven pretty good and could maybe be a one of in the main deck as well, but mostly just good out of the sideboard against a lot of, again, token-based decks, and just cards that, you know, decks that go wide with just natural creatures, you know, your aggro decks, your Tarka Reds, and even some of your mid-range decks in the format right now. So, Crush has been good, but I don't know if it earns a main deck slot. Here's your power rankings for the deck, a final score of 55, and that's because, you know, it's a $20 deck, limited options, but still a lot of good options, and versatility is fairly high in the deck for a $20 deck, um, and we do a lot of stuff fairly well, you know, but not anything amazingly well, you know, we get outclassed by some decks in the format that just have more money than us, but at the budget level and at the local level, this can actually be a really good deck that has a lot of answers, you know, a lot of our creatures our answers to certain strategies in the format, and we've got a lot of counter spells that work really well. We've actually got more removal than your average blue deck, you know, so there's a lot of things that we do fairly well in the deck. Versatility is relatively high, and there are multiple ways of improving it. Obviously, you could put in He Who Shall Not Be Named. That would probably improve the deck quite a bit. Um, aside from him, though, you could put in, you know, Eldrazi. I like the idea of Thought Not Seer in the deck, and I actually like the idea of Blue-White Eldrazi, a deck that I'm working on as we speak, and will probably be a thing maybe after um, Innistrad comes out, I want to do that deck, because Eldrazi Displacer is good, you know, obviously, with a lot of our creatures in the deck. It would be good with Reflector Mage in the deck, you know, it's basically Blue-White mid-range at this point. Um, and Thought Not Seer, perhaps even Reality Smasher could work. So I could see that deck being good, and it's just really a step up from this deck, you know, really not much you have to do to turn it into that. So, honestly, I do like the deck, though, at its, at its base level right here. It's got a little bit more game than a score of 55 would imply. But what are we doing next time? I've got time to probably do one more solid deck tech before the format rotates, so I really want to know what you want to see. And I know you want to see post-rotation decks. I'm working on a couple of things right now. I'm working on Jund. I already mentioned that to a commenter the other day. I know people like Jund. So do I. So uh, let me know what you want to see, and I will get to work on that. I'm already working on a few other projects right now. Um, but in any case, I'm Dev from SBMTG. If you enjoyed the content, do all the YouTube stuff, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all the stuff. But do, do them. It's very important to me if you do those things. And I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thanks for watching, my wizards.